this is Cliff Walker from VacuumBeals.com. The purpose of today's video is to very briefly introduce our range of machines, more specifically to show you how quickly it can be, a machine can be unpacked and uh, assembled into a machine. And the machine we're going to assemble is this one here, a 2S machine, and it comes in these two boxes. But first to the machines. So this one over here is our biggest machine, it's what we call the 4S. It can have one or two pumps in the lower panel and one or two resin traps on the top panel. These resin traps uh, inside them, which we'll have a look at later on, uh, inside there's a um, 3 US gallon or a 12 litre catch pot in each of those resin traps. There can be up to eight vacuum connections on the trap lid. You can have adjustable vacuum levels here, vacuum gauge, connection for an absolute pressure gauge. So the 4S machine is a, is, um, you know, a very versatile machine for a big uh, composites uh, operation. Next size down is the 2S machine. It has two positions, one position at the bottom for a, an, a range of various types of vacuum pump. And then on the top panel, we, again, we have a large resin trap, the same three gallon or 12 litre catch pot inside. Little guy is this micro machine. Um, it has a smaller pump. The catch pot is two litres or four US pints. Well, the catch pot in the resin track is two litres or four US pints. Same degree of control, vacuum control. Uh, again, absolute pressure gauge connection. Then over on this side, this is our original uh, back and wheel. It took the 20 bar 2 machine. There's lots of these all around the world. Uh, it'll compact down, it separates here and compacts down um, into a small machine, easily transported machine, very versatile machine. It's also got the um, 4 US point or 2 litre uh, catch pot in the resin track. Just two connections on its track lid. So that's the 20 bar 2 machine. Now the, the main purpose of this video is to unpack these two cartons and assemble one of those 2S machines. The purpose of the clock is just really to show you how quickly it can be done. So we're starting at about 1, 1 p.m. Um, and before I start uh, the actual unpacking, and what was really the motivation for producing 20 bar 2 machine is that um, I bought a barbecue about the time we were beginning to look at exporting machines and uh, came in about three or four cartons and there was a note, big note on one of them saying some assembly required. Well, they certainly weren't kidding. It took about a half a day, lots of tools, and I ended up with very sore hands because there were lots of sharp edges, metal edges. Um, it was a terrible thing to assemble and I vowed and declared that we'd never make things so difficult for our customers. So that was the motivation. Now let's get started. For tools, um, a knife will be handy. A pair of scissors, a pair of side cutters, and either an adjustable wrench or one 7 8 or 22 millimeter uh, ring and opening in the span will be fine. So this is the main part of the machine, it's the pump and the, and the cart. It comes in this carton. We just need to remove the plastic wrapping. Then we need to cut the straps. Lift off the carton. It's really important to lift the carton off from the top, the complete carton. Don't cut the carton through here and try and get the machine out um, from inside the carton. Remove the whole carton. So now we can just lift the machine off. While we're here, we'll have a look at this. Um, inside the base, we have uh, instruction manual. We have some spare parts for the resin trap, which we can look at later. We have oil for the pump, spare filter element for the filter unit, and, and some other bits which we'll look at later. We need one bottle of oil. So there's enough oil supplied with the machine for about 1,500 running hours. Adjustable wrench, just to loosen the oil filler cap.
Now I don't want to overfill the pump, I'm just filling somewhere between halfway and about three quarter full. Uh, we don't want too much oil, we want to leave a little air space at the top of the oil visible in the side glass. And just tighten up that up a little bit. While I'm here, um, to make sure, remind you to put the oil in, we put a uh, cover over the electrical plug. Uh, once you've got the oil in, you can remove that warning label and then the plug is exposed. So that's the base part of the machine's all ready to go. Now we have to unpack the resin trap. In this case, we're going to open the carton from the top. At the top of the carton, we have three collapsible buckets. Two of them we've left packed, one is unpacked. Um, these these are spare catch pots. There's another one going to be inside the machine, as you'll see in a minute. These are spare catch pots. There's a way of assembling. We've got a separate video for the assembly of these. But don't throw these away. These are your spare catch pots. So there's just a little bit of foam packing that you have to pull out. Slip the, the resin trap into position like that. <laughs> to remove the lid of this particular um, this particular lid, you just push the handles down half a turn, push down and rotate about half a turn, lift the lid off. Inside here we've got a little bit more packing material. We've got the two handles which we're going to put on the cart. Put them down there for a the minute. We have a hose which we can put on right away. Just loosen these brand nuts a fraction. Push that in. Move that up. Push it into this one. Tighten that one up. That's the connection between the trap and the resin the resin trap and the pump's now been made. In the catch pot we also have a poster you can put up on the wall that just explains the infusion process. Here's the catch pot that comes with the machine before I forget. It's this um, very thick cardboard catch pot, wooden base. That's the standard one that comes with the machine. And these ones, as we can see in the other video, are the replacement ones that go in later. It's just much easier to transport if they collapse like this. Now we've got to fit the handles. These do require an Allen key. We've got two bolts. We supply the Allen key attached to one of the handles. The two bolts are of two different lengths. We put them in the right hole, but we put them upside down just for transport. Perhaps I'll turn the machine around, just so we can see this. So to fit the handle, but this is really the most time consuming part of the assembly is just putting the two handles on. I need to put the lid track on. Push down on the handles, rotate, and that's the lid in position. So here I'm going to fit the vacuum gauge, it just clips in there. And these are the spare parts for the machine, um, not very many. There's a little torch kit, which while I've got it, I'm about to explain. If you just want to prove the illumination in the, in the catch pot that has a viewport, you can just put the torch kit on the top, it's just a bright little LED torch and gives you much better visibility inside the trap. The parts can just sit here. 
So effectively, we're now ready to go. So we can just plug in the power. Push the switch, which is here. Just here. And we now have that uh, on the track. Okay, so you'll see that we're now ready. It's ready to go. Um, and it's probably taken a little bit less than a quarter of an hour to do. I'm going to go through the details now and uh, I'll start, I'll switch the pump on again. I'm going to close this valve because I want to just go through the back engage again. That's just releasing the vacuum out of the track. So the vacuum gauge gets, when the machine is supplied, the vacuum gauge gets packed into this little spare, part, spare parts kit which sits here on the machine. Um, it just clips into the socket, you don't need to do it, just push it down. That's the gauge in position. There's one thing you need to do in detail, in fact I'll come up closer to show you that. On the top of the gauge is a, a little lever. We need to turn that over to the vent position to open the vent. These are liquid filled gauges and we need to vent them before use, so I've just got the vent on it, push it in, and now I can operate the valve. Now we're putting vacuum into the track. While we're letting the, the track get evacuated, I will now show you how the vacuum regulation valve works. To make the vacuum regulation valve effective, we have to open this valve. And then we can rotate this, if we unwind it, we can now set any level of vacuum we like. And the reason we might want to do that is that we're working with uh, the ester resins containing styrene. Um, often they will boil if the vacuum is too high, and so you can just regulate the vacuum to avoid resin boil off when you start to infuse. If you want to override the vacuum regulator, you can just depress the little knob on the top. And you might want to do this if you're adjusting the bag at the beginning of the process. The vacuum's too, too good, and um, you can't adjust the bag easily. You can just override the vacuum with that. But once you let the knob go, you'll go back to your preset position. If you want to go to full vacuum, just close this valve. and then it'll go full vacuum on the gauge. The last little bit always takes a little while. And for most accurate readings, you just want to tap the gauge on the side just a little bit because the mechanism has, um, there's oil in there just to free up the mechanism, just tap the gauge. So there we are, we're near enough to full vacuum. Um, the next thing we'll look at is the fitting of the tube into the cap lid. So again, I want to vent the cap and we can do that. Get the lid off again, push down on the handles, rotate about a half a turn. And that's the trap lid removed. Um, a number of gland fittings, um, in this case a couple of different sizes. This is the half inch or 12.7mm, and this one is the 3 8 or 10mm. But we can have a range of sizes up to 19mm uh, or 3 quarters. So that's the trap lid glands. You can see the big viewport, which allows visibility down into the catch pot. Uh, we think that's great for peace of mind when infusing. Put the lid on. Fitting the tubing. The tubing we recommend is translucent polyethylene. Um, and we recommend you always start with a fresh end, so just get a pair of tubing cutters not scissors because they tend to crush the tube, the proper tubing cutters and just cut the end nice and square. When we supply the machine there's plugs in every one of the connections. You just pull the plug out and normally store them in the in the spare parts, store them in the spare parts kit. I'll take two of them out because then I can form a loop. So to fit the tube, I just loosen the gland nut just a little bit. So I need to take it completely undone. And I push down firmly. 
until I feel the tube hit a stop. The tube won't go too far until we hit a stop. I'll do that with this one. So now effectively I've made two, two tube connections and they'll be perfectly neat tight with the O-ring seals. I can now go back up the back end again. So you can see how quick and easy it was to make those vacuum connections. So now we'll uh, change the camera position again uh, because I'm going to look at the pump uh, oil filling, uh, oil draining, pump maintenance. Right, so now we're going to look at uh, things to do with the pump. Um, before, we'll look at oil changing first. So before we drain the pump, just lock the casters, or at least two of the casters. And it's easier if you, you don't have to, but it's easier if you slide the pump out um, to the first stop on its slide. So the pump actually slides out, and it will lock about 75 millimetres out, which just makes oil draining really easy. Uh, you want some sort of oil catch pot, uh, oil drain tray, could be an ice cream container or something like that, but yeah, um, about a litre or a couple of pints, just to give a little bit of manoeuvring room. Um, then either an open-ended, uh, I mean, uh, an adjustable wrench or just an open-end spanner or a ring spanner, whatever you've got to undo the oil drain. And it's not bad if you have another little tray that you can put that in. And if you want to accelerate the process, you can tilt the trap, the pump forward a little bit. I won't worry about draining out the very last drop, but it does pay to remove all the oil because um, you know it's the last of the residues might be in the bottom of the pump. But that's oil drainage. And just nip the drain plug up again. I'm going to push that to one side. I'll give this feed a bottle of oil. So as I mentioned earlier, we have um, we supply enough oil with the machine for 1,500 hours, um, and an oil change typically is about 500 between oil changes typically about 500 hours so there's at least three oil changes so again we're just making sure we don't overfill the pump that'll do us that doesn't take too long. One other thing we can do while the pump's partly out is we can have a look, just check the filter unit. To do that, you can just unplug the, uh, the hose from the trap. The, the filter unit itself unplugs in the same way. It's the easy way to do it. Just unclip the lid, take the lid off. Have a look at the filter unit, it's all nice and clean. It's inside the filter nice and clean. back on and just tighten it, grand that up. Everything's just hand tight, there's no need to be excessive with tightness. Put the hose in, do up the hose. Um, push the trap back, or push the pump back. So now we're back into our normal operating position, everything's connected. If the pump has been dirty, it's been running a long time, then we'd like uh, we like to see this end of the pump particularly given a good blow down. I'll just get rid of the oil here. And this is normally best done with the pump on. Um, you just want to get a good... I'll be here. If 
particularly around this, the fan end of the motor, uh, most of the dust gets attracted in from this end, and so we want to keep this end of the pump nice and clean. And that's really about all there is to it. Right, so one little further detail we'll look at is the use of an absolute pressure gauge. Absolute pressure gauge looks like this, it's an electronic digital gauge. It's different from this gauge in that this gauge reads to an acid vacuum improves, this reads to an increasing number. On this gauge, if the vacuum improves, um, the number actually decreases. So it's now open to atmospheric pressure. It's a low pressure day in Auckland today and we're reading 1,001 millibar of atmospheric pressure. A perfect vacuum would be zero. So let's put it on the machine. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. We've got this actual gauge port that's under the machine here. It's exactly the same type of fitting as this one. We can put the plug in this little recess which is up here on the manifold. Simply goes in. Open up, pump, open up the trap to vacuum. Uh, you're under 400 millibar, under 300. Close back the ventilation valve, but we're not getting anywhere. Under 100. It starts to get a little slower as it gets towards the end, but we're now under 30 millibar. Under 20. So we're under 10 millibar, we've removed 99% of the air from inside the resin trap and exactly the same as when we connected to the part, we could remove 99% of the air from your part um, as long as there were no air leaks into the system. So that's the use of an absolute pressure gauge. This gauge at atmospheric pressure has gone back to zero. This guy's gone for a minute. It's gone back to a thousand and one millibar again.